trouble first erupted on the Brackenhall estate just after 9 o'clock last night. Phoenix pub, just reopened as a community venture, was the scene of a drugs raid. Five people were arrested. A short time later, a nearby shop was rammed and looted. A stolen car involved was set on fire. Soon after that, the riot police began flooding into the streets as up to 300 youths went on the rampage. People were outside on the beach and told them cat parts and for themselves. And police just come up and they just charged in and arrested a few people for now, saying it were drugs. It's just so stupid, really. The police in Beckenau's got a bad name and they just won't leave people in peace up here. Especially the black ones, they won't leave them in peace. They just like to persecute them, they pull them off the streets. Because they're black, they think they've got drugs, which is not, it's not very, well, it's not fair. For the next six hours, police fought running battles with the youths. 21 policemen suffered minor injuries as they came under a hail of stones and bottles. Further 11 youths were arrested the residents accused the police of heavy-handed tactics. I've got my brother on the floor beating him, and I mean absolutely beating him. There's at least six of them. They've got my boyfriend in the other van eating him over the head with the truncheon. He's got an XW at the back of his helmet, which I noticed. Uh, he's calling me a slag. You know what I mean? I'm trying to help my brother. He's calling me a slag, telling me to get away or else I'll get arrested. It's just, it's all riot. It's mad. I think it is fair to say that the deployments which were made during the night were made very professionally with a view to keeping public disorder to a minimum and with a view to avoiding injury to people and to protecting the property of others. One youth says he intends to sue the police after allegedly receiving a beating in police cells before being released. The West Yorkshire Force say they will investigate any allegations of criminal acts committed by officers on duty last night. My hands were handcuffed and when I was saying to them, well, un un uncuff my hands and let one of you come in, they were saying, no, no, two of them come in while I was still handcuffed and just started punching me. Even while last night's events were still unfolding, people on the estate were divided about why the situation had become so serious. Criticism was by no means limited to the police, as bystanders argued amongst themselves. Smashing a pub window, turning over cars in the middle of the street, but police did not do that. Right? And we must take responsibility on ourselves to do something about it. The um, uh, people responsible for this mayhem um, found it necessary to break most of the street lights in the area so that there was no light there. Now, I think from that, you can very easily extrapolate what their intentions were. The police finally moved off the estate just before dawn this morning. The residents of Brackenhall are now trying to work out why the trouble erupted and what can be done to stop it from happening again. People will be trying every means at their disposal to ensure that public order is maintained. I hope that I don't have to mount another operation of this sort in the future. Just when it seemed life might be improving on the Brackenhall estate, things turned sour. Roads had been altered to frustrate the joyriders, 700 homes had been given a new facelift. A fresh symbol of hope was the Phoenix pub, closed down 18 months ago because of drugs dealing, reopened only two days ago as a community venture. The time seemed ripe for a new start, but police say no sooner were the doors reopened than the drugs were back, so they moved in. But the estate's large black population claim it's just the latest case in a saga of police harassment. They want a bad area and they're making, they want Brackenall to be that bad area and because, reason why, because all the black people live up here. I thought, I, you know, everything was coming together with the police, but I, I won't trust them no more. I, 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 I could them. never trust them. But hours after last night's disturbances, efforts began to rebuild that trust. Police and council chiefs joined community leaders to work out how to avoid further trouble. Sorry that you've got this mess this morning, it really is ghastly. And Barry Sherman, Huddersfield's MP and the Labour front bench spokesman on Home Affairs, was also on the scene looking for some home truths. It shouldn't have happened to me, they shouldn't take it out on me. 
Uh, I've never done anything wrong. I've been here uh, 13, 14 years, and uh, I, I haven't done anything wrong to them. If I do anything, it's uh, towards their help. Very bad. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. It's Nightmare. Terrible. High unemployment is being blamed for the disaffection of the youth of Bracken Hall. Despite all that's been done for the estate, the spur prevails. Best chance I can get out of help me. Well, especially when he's a child, like, when he gets a bit older, he's going to start noticing things, you know what I mean? So before he gets to be able to take it all in his head, that's what will be out of here. By common consent, the problems of estates like Bracken Hall can't be swept under the carpet much longer. After a second night of violence on Huddersfield's Bracken Hall estate, the police and community leaders appeal for calm. One officer is in hospital with neck and head injuries after youths threw stones and petrol bombs at the police. Good evening from Huddersfield, where at the moment the estate is calm, a contrast to last night when trouble lasted for nearly two hours and spread into the heart of the estate. Tonight we report on those events and, ten years on from the Scarman report into inner city violence across Britain, we ask if anything has really changed. The scale of last night's violence was, if anything, worse than the previous night. Cars were set on fire and shops were looted in the worst violence seen in Yorkshire since the year-long miners' strike. Our first report this evening is from Richard Hewitt, who spent last night here at Brackenhall. Despite all the efforts of the police and community leaders to maintain calm, trouble flared for a second night on the Brackenhall estate. It started with raids on two local shops, one of which was ransacked. As riot police poured onto the estate, the situation worsened as a car was set on fire. Gangs of youths ran for cover in an alleyway, and there they pelted police and firemen with stones and petrol bombs. But now the argument is over who was behind the violence. I'm disappointed for the community that this has happened, given that uh, at lunchtime yesterday we'd worked so hard together and reached a, a mutual understanding. I don't think it's going to ruin the community's views because I think I was given the information during the night that a lot of these people were from outside of the Bracken Hall estate and I think that's probably true. No, it's still the same people that were here last night as well, that were in the pub last night, that were on the estate last night. I haven't seen any outsiders as yet, I've been looking at a bedroom window up there, so I've got a bird's eye view of everybody up and down here. I've seen locals, that's all. The police charged towards the youths in an effort to drive them off the streets. The youths retaliated by setting fire to a second car. The owner could only look on helplessly as it went up in flames. Two policemen were hurt as the violence continued into the early hours, and local residents caught up in the disturbances say they're living in fear. It's not on us. It's not on. I mean, I've been here, I'm a Scottish. I'm Scottish, but I've been here 26 years. I've never seen this before. Never seen this. It's not on. It is not on. We shouldn't have to live like that. We've at the other side of it, so I've been throwing petrol bombs through alleyway here. So I've been looking through the window mostly. So if all goes, we can get straight out. The West Yorkshire Police helicopter was called to the scene to give the officers on the ground more information about the movement of the gangs and any fresh incidents. But the police say despite last night's events, they won't change their tactics. No one was arrested, but they say the culprits will be caught. Well, we continue to police the area in the same way. That's what I intend to do. And uh, I'm sure in the end we will, uh, we will conquer it. We have quite a lot of evidence as to who was causing the trouble and who was involved in it. And uh, we will be making further inquiries today, very active inquiries. I walked past the pub about half past 11. There was about 200 youth outside, right, waiting. They were, they were just waiting. And what the police did, the police played straight into their hands. Right? If they'd keep away, there wouldn't be none of this. Order was finally restored just before 2 a.m. After dawn, the Bracken Hall residents were left to face another clean-up operation. Okay. Yeah, well, they'll see what they're doing then, won't they? Because there'll be no left for them, and the council won't give them no then. And it'll, it'll, be, it'll be like a ghetto. We'll, it'll end up like a ghetto. And everybody else is going to suffer, not them, because they'll move out. They'll be old enough then, 18, 19, to get married and move out. So... Kevin Wood there reflecting the fears of people at Brackenhall. 
Well, today, West Yorkshire's chief constable said that the force must not take the blame for the previous two nights of violence. So who is to blame? Jake Fowler has spent the day on the estate to gauge the views of local people. There were few signs early today that the Brackenhall estate had been through another violent night. There were pointers to what had gone on, but residents say it's difficult to believe that these quiet streets had been the setting for violent disorder. One local shop was clearing up after windows were smashed. Another, ransacked in the early hours, wasn't open for business. Local people found it hard to believe that their district had been caught up in the trouble. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I'm disgusted. Disgusted. Absolutely. Probably a lot of it is to do with the fact that, you know, it's probably, I should imagine, a bit of copycat going on, you know. I mean, it is happening in other areas at the moment, isn't it? So, I don't know. No, I'm leaving totally out of the area now. I ain't co I'm not coming back. That's it, I'm out of the area. This morning, at a West Yorkshire Police Authority meeting, the question of urban crime was under discussion, particularly in relation to problem housing estates. But Brackenhall hadn't been one targeted by the police as a potential problem area. But after two nights of violence, the Huddersfield estate was discussed. Afterwards, the chief constable was asked if the police operation that sparked off the original clashes had been heavy-handed. That's totally incorrect. Uh, what was happening there is that uh, there was some drug dealing going on fairly openly, and we have to respond to these matters. Uh, we respond to them in a sensible way. Obviously, there was no idea that uh, what, in fact, occurred would have, would have occurred. Uh, otherwise, we might have handled it slightly differently. But we do have a responsibility to enforce the law, and the law is enforced in West Yorkshire. More than a decade ago, following bouts of inner-city rioting, Lord Scarman's inquiry recommended methods of community policing to defuse tension in troubled areas. Some observers believe that, in general, the police are more sensitive, but social factors have created another problem. Groups of these young people, and, and indeed young adults, are now seriously detached from the rest of society in that um, the normal opportunity structures and the, um, the chances of entering the world at work um, have diminished uh, almost to vanishing point. And we, we now have uh, what the Victorians would have identified as a substantial underclass living in many of our urban centres. This evening, the concern for residents here is not so much about underlying factors or methods of policing. All they want is a quiet night tonight and every night. Well, joining me now to discuss the situation here at Brackenhall are Johnny Flowers, who's a member of Huddersfield's Police Liaison Committee, and John Harmon, who's leader of the local authority, Kirklees Council. Mr Harmon, first of all, we've heard various explanations as to how these disturbances started, but why do you think they started? Why Brackenhall? Why this estate? There's no particular reason why Brackenhall. There are other places where you might expect the same conditions apply. And I think the people of Brackenhall are extremely upset that it has happened here. Now that it started, when the, when the flashpoint came, and there was a certain element of copycatting, there's been a certain element of outsiders coming in to try and promote further trouble. And with all due respect, the fact that the cameras and the press are here is inviting people to put on a show. And I think it's sort of, it's carried on from there. But the initial flashpoint really could have happened anywhere. Mr Flowers, why do you think that Bracken Hall has apparently become a focus for two nights of violence? Well, just like Council Harmon says, I don't think it's particularly uh, the community as a whole, but I think it's a great mistrust of the police to the community. Uh, Eighteen months ago, there were some drug problems on the estate, and because of this new uh, club or pub that's open, I think they wanted to stem it in the bud. People here have been talking about building bridges and opening up a dialogue with the police, but isn't that precisely what's been happening at Bracken Hall? You have had a dialogue with the police and there has been a, a real attempt to build bridges. Well, yes, that's definitely. And over the, uh, the hours that have gone, the police and the, the community have uh, sort of sorted out a bit and the police are trying their utmost best. But obviously there's an element of cutting. And last night, for example, there were people all the people coming into the community to do it. The people here are deeply upset and at the moment they're trying desperately to prevent it happening again. Mr Harmon, can I ask you what you think should be done to try and prevent it happening again? Because the local authority has spent a lot of money on this place. It's not the kind of place where you would expect this kind of violence. It requires a building of trust. These things are very, very long jobs. You can spend a lot of money on the area and the local authority has done. Talking about £10 million to refurbish some of the housing around here and with a further bid 
for a state action for even more than that. That's government money. But you can spend what you like upon the physical nature of the area. It is the people that you've got to get to. It's building trust. And what's happened over the last couple of nights has put that process back by months, maybe a year. That's, that's tragic. People here, you, you, can't, you can't solve by spending money people's despair due to the fact they can't find work, the young people uh, are left on the streets. Um, it's a much bigger problem than that. That's why we're seeing it happen in all sorts of places. It's a tragedy it's happened here because this community is really getting on its feet, working for itself, and it's the sort of thing we want to encourage. The sooner we can get back to normality, the better. Mr Harmon, Mr Flowers, thank you.